Hi there, I am Monica Burns and welcome to the new Easy Ed Tech podcast episode. As a former New York City public school teacher and current ed tech consultant, I started this podcast in 2019 to share my favorite classroom tech integration tips and stories from my experiences. Each episode offers practical ideas for you to try, share, or save for later. Be sure to check out classtechtips.com slash podcast for today's show notes and resources. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or another favorite podcast app, You'll find the show notes link in the description too. This episode is sponsored by my free weekly planner pages. I've created a downloadable set of planner pages for you that you can start using today. It's a great way to stay organized in the new year or anytime you like. Print them out to write in your daily schedule and tasks or use the file on your tablet or computer to keep track of your to-do list and set your priorities each day. These planner pages are totally free and you can find them at classtechtips.com slash planner. This week's episode is titled Science Projects with a Digital Spin. And whether you are listening to this in the summertime and you want to get some ideas to bring to a summer learning program or summer camp or to recommend to families, or you're listening to this in the fall and you are looking for a few ways to take a digital spin on a science project that you have always done or are excited to do, this podcast episode has you covered. We're going to talk about some of my favorite ways to infuse digital tools into learning experiences. And if you are not wearing a science hat this school year, maybe you're listening in to find some recommendations for a colleague, or maybe you're teaching something very different, but this will inspire you to think about a tool or resource that you just haven't considered in a while. So we're going to look at a variety of science projects for kids. So some traditional things, some more tech savvy connections, and these are all ones that you can really tailor to your group of students. So let's jump into the list. First up is a citizen science project. Now with this type of project, kids can participate in a project where they're gathering scientific information that contributes to real scientific research. This might include observing something or documenting something in nature or around the climate. And there's a few different tools, some friendly tech friendly tools that help make this happen. I'll link out to all the resources I mentioned today, but of course you could jot something down if you wanted to, but I've got a whole list for you to explore. So iNaturalist is one example of a tool that facilitates a citizen science Science project. If you haven't heard of it before, it's an initiative of the California Academy of Sciences and the National Geographic Society. And on their website, you can see just all the steps for how to participate. You could do this as a class. You could even suggest this to families. So one fun techie science project is a citizen science project where kids are gathering information that is part of a crowdsourcing for research that another organization is organizing or facilitating. Next up is the use of stop motion animation. Kids can use stop motion animation to explore physics, biology, chemistry concepts through storytelling. And if you haven't seen stop motion animation before, well, you might have seen it, but you just might not have used that term. It's where you are as a filmmaker moving something just a little bit, taking a picture, moving a little bit more, taking a picture. And then when you put all those pictures together, it makes it look like that object is moving on its own. If you remember some of the claymation type of videos that were popular a few decades ago, that uses stop motion animation. There's a few different tools you can use to make that happen, including stop motion studio. So that's something kids could use from a tablet, a smartphone, and they can you know really combine what's a physical hands-on activity of moving something or watching a plant grow with a digital app. 
Another techie or digital spin on a science project could involve astronomy and stargazing. So if your kids are excited about astronomy or stargazing, you might introduce an app like Skyview or Star Walk 2. These ones you can hold up to the sky and it helps kids identify stars, constellations, planets in the night sky or during the daytime, depending on when you use it, right? And they can learn about astronomy. If you're not teaching this this year, but you know that your students are extra excited or there's some really fun astronomy event taking place this school year that maybe I don't know about, but maybe you are excited about, right? You might even recommend one of these apps to families. Number four on the list is virtual field trips. And it's a topic I talk about on the blog a lot. And I'll link out to two blog posts here in the show notes. One is with my Earth Day field trips and another is a list for summertime, but you could really use them any time of year. Just just wanna consider the connection that you're making. So this is something that you might combine with a more traditional science project, really to help kids build some vocabulary. So you might explore a space like a museum or a zoo or a national park as a virtual field trip and then make a connection back to what you are teaching in a science classroom. Now, of course, you could use the virtual field trips in any subject area for vocabulary building, but science is our our vehicle, our focus for today's conversation. Number five on the list is coding and robotics science projects. So with a digital spin here, you might use some platforms that explore coding basics like Scratch or Blockly or something that programs a robot to move like Sphero EDU. And I have two conversations in past podcast episodes that are great if you're thinking about this sort of digital spin, right? This sort of science project. Episode 162, I talk with Regina Landry all about getting over a fear of teaching coding. So that's perfect if you are interested but not feeling super confident in your coding background. And episode 153 is with Lori Guyon. We talk about how to make computer science standards fun. And so that was an episode that really makes a standards connection too. So those are two great ones, 153 and 162. You can scroll back a bit and I'll also link out to them in the show notes for today. Now, another digital spin you might take with a science project for students is weather tracking. There's lots of weather apps that track and analyze local weather patterns, and you can even compare them with other places in the world. So you might use a local weather services website or even a tool like weather.com to gather information, and kids can create their own journals that document their observations around the weather too. You might use an interactive journaling tool like Book Creator. I've worked with their team, big fan of them. You might have kids open up a Google Doc or a slides presentation and use a slide deck to make an interactive journal to document things that they see related to weather as well. Now, if you're looking for a combination of hands-on and digital, if your students have access to an outdoor space, whether it's with you in school or it's outside the classroom and you're making a recommendation to a family member, you might encourage kids to start a small garden. This might be hand in hand with a composting project. Those of you who've seen me speak before know I love to tell composting stories from my classroom, but kids could have a garden that they are actively involved in or observing and track the growth and development of plants over time. So kind of like that weather tracking, you might encourage kids to use an interactive journaling tool to capture their observations. I did a post earlier this year all about video journals. And so that might be something that you try out with a plant garden observation too. Now, next up on the list with a digital spin here for some of our science projects is a music and sound connection. So students can use music creation apps like GarageBand or Soundtrap to experiment with sound waves or frequencies and harmonics. And if your kids are excited about music, this is a great way to make a science connection. If you're not teaching music alongside science, but you know that your students are interested in in musical things. This could be a connection that you make or encourage for a cross-curricular experience for kids. 
Now, up on our list, the last one on our list here are augmented reality apps, are these AR science apps. I've featured lots of favorite augmented reality resources on the blog in the past, but if your students have access, especially to a smartphone or tablet, something that they can move around a little bit, you might recommend that they explore some science concepts, maybe with a merge cube, right, or maybe with another favorite simulation that allows them to explore a topic with that augmented reality layer. I know we're getting, uh, AI is getting so much love right now in education, but there's lots of other types of technology to explore like augmented reality too, uh, that might be a good fit. So science projects with a digital spin are a great way to inspire kids to get curious, wonder about the world around them, whether you are looking for something to explore this summer, maybe you're listening to this live in July and thinking with summer on the mind, and you want to send a few notes home to kids who might want to explore something as a family, or whether you're planning for the fall or well into the school year, you could try out a few of the things on this list with your next science project. So let's finish up this episode with a couple key points, a couple ideas, a few favorites from this list. Try out a citizen science project to collect data. Use a stop motion animation tool to track progress or growth. Explore virtual field trips to build vocabulary and create an interactive journal for weather tracking or garden observations. Remember, you can find the show notes and full list of resources from this episode at classtechtips.com slash podcast and finding today's episode number 222. Today's episode was sponsored by my free weekly planner pages. I've created a downloadable set of planner pages for you that you can start using today. Use these free planner pages to stay organized any time of year. There's no official start date. You can use them right away. Print them out to write in your daily schedule and tasks or use the file on your tablet or computer to keep track of your to-do list and set priorities each day. These planner pages are totally free and you can find them at classtechtips.com slash planner. Thanks for joining us for another Tuesday edition of the Easy Ed Tech podcast. Remember to hit follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite app to have next week's episode ready for you on Tuesday morning. Feel free to share takeaways from this episode with friends or colleagues in a quick email or text, or even on social media. And don't hesitate to tag me at Class Tech Tips if you have any questions.